Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of satellite communication. In today's class, we are going to learn about time division multiple axis. In short, we call it as TDMA. Okay. So as the term or the heading defines time division multiple axis, we are giving access to the multiple users based on the time division. Okay. So TDMA divides entire radio spectrum or the bandwidth into time slots. Okay. So each time slot will be allotted for a particular user to utilize particular bandwidth or the radio spectrum. Okay. So one user, instead of allowing all the users at a time and uh, creating problems, this time division multiple axis give access to the all the users based on the time slots. Okay. So one only one user is allowed to utilize each time slot either to transmit or receive the signal. Okay. So this whole process happens in a cycle manner with the respect to repeating time slot. Suppose there are three users, let us say user one, user two and user three. Okay. So these three users will be allotted a time slot. Okay. So based on the time slot allotted to them, they need to utilize that particular uh, bandwidth or the radio spectrum for the transmission or the reception of the signal. Suppose, um, suppose user one is uh, utilizing the bandwidth, let us say, or uh, user one is transmitting the signal right now in its allotted time slot. Okay. So the user two and user three need to wait for their time slot. Okay. Once the user one uh, finishes its time slot and comes next comes the user two time slot. Okay. In the user two time slot only user two can able to access the transmission and reception of the signal. Similarly, user three need to wait till its time slot appears. Okay. So like this. So until the user two and user three finishes their time slots, again, user one can't access that particular time slot or the radio spectrum or the bandwidth. Okay. Now this user one need to wait okay, to transmit or receive the signal till user 2 and user 3 finishes their time slots. Okay? So by that time, TDMA system transmits the data in buffer or and burst mode. Okay? Suppose, uh, let us say user 1 is or uh, has already finished this time slot. Okay? And again, the user 1 is ready to transmit or receive the signal and ready to access that particular bandwidth. But what's happening here? There is a no time slot for this user one right now or user two or user three is accessing the time slot right now. Okay. So by till the time the user one gets its time slot, it need to store its data in the buffer or the burst mode. Okay. So whenever the user one gets its time slots in a cycling format, then only uh, he can transmit or the user one transmit or receive the data. This concept can be considered as buffer and burst mode. Okay. So therefore, according to this whole concept, TDMA systems are mostly utilized in digital communication systems. So here we have two things in TDMA or TDD. Uh, okay. So this is time division duplex. Okay. A single frame. Okay. So here, what we are considering a frame means one cycle of all the users can be considered as one frame. Here we are talking about three users, right? Three users need to utilize their time slots. Then only it will be considered as one frame. Okay. Now in this concept in TDMA with respect to TDD, which is nothing but time division duplex, a single frame is used for, okay. Uplink as well as river link transmission as well as reception of the signal. Okay. So half of the time is used for uplink and half remaining half of the time in the single frame is used for the reverse link. Okay. And coming to the TDMA with respect to FDD frequency division duplex here, two frames are used. One frame is used for uplink uh, that is transmission and another frame is used for the reverse link. Okay. Now let's see the basic TDMA frame structure. As I have already said, okay, there are three users. Let us say user one, user two, and user three. Okay. So these three users are trying to utilize the TDMA slot. Okay. Now, this is first thing the user one comes and utilizes the time slot. Next comes the user two 
and utilizes its time slot. Next comes the user three and it also utilizes the time slot. Now, as there are only three users, the three users time slot can be considered as frame one. This is frame one. Similarly, again, the cycle repeats. Now what happens again? The user one will be accessing the second time slot. User two will be accessing its time slot and user three will be accessing its time slot again. Okay. Same thing. This is can be considered as frame two based on the times time slots allotted to that particular user. They need to come and utilize that particular bandwidth or radio spectrum. Okay. For trans transmission or reception of the signal. Okay. Remember. Okay. So similarly coming to similarly coming to user three. Okay. So frame three, again, the user one comes and access this particular first frame. I mean the time slot user two again comes and access this particular uh, time slot user three again comes and access this particular time slot. Okay. This third one can be considered as frame. Three. Okay. So each frame can be considered as one cycle of all the users utilizing their time slots with respect to the bandwidth or the radio spectrum in order to transmit or receive the signal. Okay. This is a simple concept. Now, if you consider the time frame, okay, each frame, uh, as we have seen multiple frames here right now. Now, each frame, one TDMA frame is divided into preamble, information message, as well as trial bits. Okay. So what is preamble and what is information message and what is the trial bits we are going to see. Now, apart from preamble as well as trial bits, each information message is divided into number of slots where number of slots are nothing but each slot can be considered as user. Okay. One user. Now each slot again consists of each slot again consists of trial bits, sync bits, information data, as well as guard bits. Okay. Now let's see what is the preamble first. Okay. So preamble is nothing but it consists of address as well as synchronization bits used by the base stations or the mobile stations to identify each other. Okay. So it, it on whole, it consists of the synchronization bits as well as the address of the base stations, as well as the mobile station in which through which they are communicating. Okay. What is the locations? What are the areas they are locating, uh, co communicating with all these things will come under this particular preamble. Okay. And the information message, the second one, the information message, okay, consists of different slots, time slots, which are allotted to the users and all the users information is located in this particular information message. This is the main thing. And coming to the last trial bits, you can see a trial bit over end of this particular message, as well as a trial bit over this area, starting of this particular a uh, slot. Okay. So here each slot will have, okay. Each slot. So slot one, slot two, slot three, and coming to slot n, right. Okay. Each slot again will have trial bits, sync bits. We can also call it as synchronization bits, information data, as well as guard bits. Now let's see what are these trial bits. Okay. So these trial bits are nothing but power control mechanism which helps in transmission of the signal. Whenever you are transmitting some sort of signal, you need some power, right? Okay. So at the end of that, uh, this particular message, this trial bit helps in uh, down, uh, making the power down such that the communication has been completed. And the starting trial bit of this particular uh, slot, okay, is nothing but uh, it, it makes up the power such that the transmission of the signal will be in a proper manner. Communication will be established. So 
trial beds helps in power control mechanism which helps in transmission of the signal once the communication has been com completed the power will be down and if at all the communication has to be start the power will be up okay now coming to the synchronization bits okay we call it as sync bits it helps in synchronization of the transmitter as well as receiver at the time of communication so as we are communicating with the transmitter and the receiver okay we are transmitting some signal synchronization between both of them transmitter as well as receiver is very very important at the point of communication then only the communication will be acceptable otherwise it won't be it is not acceptable okay so one time frame consists of preamble information message trial base again this particular information message consists of different slots each slot is considered as one user okay again each slot or the user will be having a trial bit synchronization bit information data here in a single slot information data is nothing but it is the data about the user okay so it is the data about the user okay and at last coming to the guard bits guard bits are nothing but guard bands okay so between the users to avoid interference between the users okay so there will be many uh, users uh, who are utilizing their time slots in the uh, bandwidth or the spectrum right so in, in order to avoid the inf interference or some miscommunication between the particular users or the time slots okay these guard bits or guard bands are provided okay so this is the whole concept of a tdma time frame with respect to an example okay so this is a tdma time division multiple axis which gives access to the multiple users based on the time slots to uh, to utilize the radio spectrum or a bandwidth okay uh, one by one 